It's plastic time. So, I, I think, yeah, it feels like a pretty nicely varied haul this year. Um, because something I was very kind of conscious about was that there really isn't very much point in buying loads of the newest figures because you can still go and buy them any point through the year. What TF Nation is about, what that dealer haul is all about, is all the old stuff that you haven't seen in Donkey's Years that will surprise you by simply being there and you can go, oh, look at that, I got one of these and all that kind of feeling. It's all about just wandering in there, not having any idea what you're going to buy, what you're going to see and just ending up, well, obviously spending quite a bit of money on things you didn't expect, which is, I think, the nicest feeling, the nicest way to do it. But I'm going to forgo all of that and start off talking about a new figure that I could have got another point and indeed actually didn't even buy it at TF Nation um, because on my way down there I managed to stop in Bristol and uh, yes, yeah, Sabine Planet offered me up Studio Series car dropkick uh, I mean, I could have bought one there at TF Nation um, but I've got to say this was just one of those things where it was like well, I'm, I'm holding it in my hands right now I'm, I'm looking at it, it's something I want to buy I've got the money in my pocket, why don't I just buy it here right now um, and I have sort of had the lesson taught to me from previous years that you know I'll go, I'll go in there and I'll see stuff and go oh there's no point buying that here and now because I'll see it on Saturday in the dealer room and then I don't so uh, it was basically just yeah I want it so there we go I'm gonna buy it it's very good it's very good it kind of summons a feeling I'm, I'm not quite sure I can fully quantify because it's kind of like there's definitely a bit of sheen to it that is Equivalent to that, the Bumblebee movie Optimus, which I actually really, I, I don't like the way that looks. It's too bloated in the upper body and this kind of thing. But it is a really cool, like, hyper-realistic update of a G1 design. It's just something about that, some particular quality that other, like, updates haven't captured. And somehow I feel like Dropkick does that, even though this is a character design that has never existed before. I don't know, it just feels kind of, maybe it's a little bit retro because of the 80s car vibe, maybe it's just because it has that kind of door wings body type that makes it feel like it could have been an old sort of diaclone design, I don't know, there's something going on here that just feels right and good and really cool and somehow really high end because it's just like a normal classic Transformers look but it's got loads more detail everywhere and it's actually quite complicated and it's a bit of a pain in the bum to transform but it's shiny blue so it's hard to beat another pre-convention purchase Cyberverse Spark Harbor Bumblebee um, I, I like this because it's the only Cyberverse Bumblebee that looks like Cyberverse Bumblebee you know, all, all the other toys of him all the already like tens and dozens of toys of him don't look like he does in the show but this one does and it's nicely poseable you know, he's nice and solid, and I, I like how he's kind of vaguely shiny with the yellow plastic. And of course, he comes with um, a battleship. Scale issues notwithstanding, you plug it in his back and it goes like whoop, and then he's all big and kind of broadsidey looking, and it feels a bit feels a bit Pacific Rim because it's just a battleship that he's going to whack people with, and you've got this anchor that comes out as a melee weapon and it's not as poseable as the box would lead you to believe because his arms can now not move outwards um but he just sort of does that and flaps about and he's got he's got big arms and he's covered in guns now and he has a has a nice hat i mean it, i can kind of take or leave the the cool extra battleship stuff because while it's a nice sort of gimmick um really what's really good about this is just the the figure underneath he's just nice it's just it's just decent like the sort of level of figures that we were getting with like the R.I.D. Warriors that I suppose we all expected the Cyberverse figures would be in and they weren't. Um, that's what this is, yeah. And he's got a nice car mode. He's, yeah, it's just nice, just nice, feels nice. Okay, now we can move on to the things I actually got at the convention. Starting off with a bit of a pre-purchase because I said on Facebook at some point, I was like, oh, I think the only thing I'm looking out for is like an Energon RC to complete my Omnicons. Brad was like, oh, you can have mine. I was like, yeah, all right then, go on. Um, so here we go, here she is. Um, it's Energon RC. Oh dear, she's a deeply awkward thing, isn't she? I didn't really realise this. Like her arms don't quite do enough, and she's got she's got tiny little tiny little hands in there, um, and like she can't really hold her massive bow um, in a pose which isn't like she's 
shooting it at someone. Very much feel like the movie deluxe one is like another go at this whole design because like the way she transforms is practically the same. We'll be seeing a lot more from Ella John through this haul because with the whole sort of zine theme well, we decided to mark that 15th anniversary of Energon. It was like, yeah, well, I'm just going to go in and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the vapors. I'm going to go and get loads of Energon stuff that I didn't get that I could have been talking about and photographing for this zine. Um, and I went and did that and I, yeah, felt good. But before we get to that, some other pre-purchases because thanks to the magic of social media, when Chris McFeely said that he found some cheapy bumblebee guys I haven't seen yet anywhere, um, in his local, what was it, like B&M I think it was? I said, oh, can you get them for me? And he said, yes, I can give them to you at TFN, and here we go. Here's Ratchet. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just a big white square ambulance. I really like it. Um, yeah, I haven't really spoken very much about the Bumblebee toys, but I really like them. There's something about them that has really like taken me, so I wanted this. It's not objectively that good. But I really like it because it's just, just retro kind of ambulance time and the little door in the back opens up and that's like a necessary step for his transformation. And you can kind of fit like micromasters and people in there. I like that! And then you crack the top end and you get some guns or whatever they are poking out the sides when you plonk the engine in the top. I like it! It's, it's, just, it's just kind of cute and fun and um, yeah, so is, is Robot Mojo, so it's like he's... Someone described it, I can't remember who it was, someone at TFM while I was sat there with this described it as him looking like he's just stood in a fridge box. Um, and that, that's true because like, I can hold the ambulance like that and you're basically seeing the outer surface of his legs. I really like it. Hoping I can get the iron hide as well and I'm kind of sad that, that that's it for this whole line, like they didn't do a jazz, they didn't do an 80s looking jazz to round out a, a retro first movie cast, but oh well. Because along with Ratchet, I did also get the big drop kick. And this is one thing that a lot of people were sort of going, oh, what's that, what's that? When I had it out over the weekend, because no one was selling these, like no one was selling, well, I think there were like a few, like a little handful of Bumblebee figures here and there, but they're the ones that you can just go and find in Tesco's. This, was something that people hadn't seen, um, and I mean, let's face it, it's something I've not seen in the shop yet either. So yes, it's it's the big kind of Voyager-sized kind of ultra, I suppose, going by the Cyberverse price points now. Um, what's it called? Nitro series dropkick. He's a helicopter. He doesn't really like this in the film. There was some concept art that came to light the other day where he does kind of look more like this, which kind of explains things a little bit. Um, but it's just like big solid helicopter man, looks a bit like Road to Storm. I was expecting all this to be clear red, but it's not, it's just grey and it's painted shiny. What can I say, it's just, it's just a big, funky, chunky toy of one of the more interesting new designs we've had in the past few years, even if it doesn't appear on screen particularly. It's like, I can't really explain why this is good. If you don't feel that kind of toyetic energy about this, then yeah, I, I, just, I can't put it into words. It's like either you look at this and you go, that's cool, I like it, or you don't. Kind of a little bit miffed that the whole like putting the engine in and having him zoom along gimmick doesn't also make the rotors of his helicopter spin. Big missed opportunity, especially when all of the engines have got a little spin around five mil hole in them that absolutely nothing uses. It's like, what is that feature there for? If not, to plug into this and plug into another bit and make some gears turn and make the blades go round. But no, that didn't happen. So whatever. Okay, it's time to virtually, in my mind, once again, wander the massive dealer room that was TFN 2019. Um, so let's go with, uh, I don't know, I mean, like, let's face it, the first thing you see as you go in the door is ID Toys massive stand. And that was where it was particularly hectic in the morning because it's like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not going to get in there to look at anything. It's just, it's rammed with people. You can't even get walk past it. So yeah, I just, I just wasn't really fussed about a lot of the stuff to be honest. Mainly because it's like, okay, anything that's new here that I want, I've either pre-ordered or like I've already bought, um, and it's just, it's just so busy. I just couldn't be bothered. So when it all died down a bit. 
I went over there and I was like, oh, okay, I can actually look at some things I might want to buy now. Now the, you know, horde of people has just stripped it bare of half of their stock. Um, so I got a Cyberverse Windblade because she was £10. And I was thinking, well, she's not going to be £10 in Tesco's when I go home. And then what, what happens? What happens? The week I come back from TFN, I go in Tesco's. And I see her there for four quid. But anyway, yeah, there we go. Um, so reverse Windblade, she's all right. I feel like with each iteration of toys of her, they kind of get it right a bit more. Um, R.I.D. Windblade was good. I really like that figure. That's the only other Windblade I've got. Um, and there's a lot of that figure in this one. Like, she's fully posable, like, when it comes to a Cyberverse figure. I like how her design is sort of translated in this series. She's got, like, big BTs and she just, I don't know, there's something better about her proportions and she looks a bit more just finished, I suppose. Um, and she does this. Which is much, I quite like, actually. That's, that's kind of fun. The only other thing I got from them was a three-quid lionizer. The only Siege figure I got, just because he was three quid, I was like, well, I, I, I don't have an Autobot Battle Master because I've only got Blowpipe because I'm really not fussed about these. And it's like, well, uh, it's a cat, it's a sword. Um, I get uh, an effect part that I haven't already got. They can go on swords. Three quid, isn't it? Like, I'll take a punt. There's really nothing to say about this. It's quite boring, to be honest. Sticking with small things for the moment, um, some more three quid purchases, just, just just because they were three quid. Like, it's literally the only reason. Like, they're not things I wanted, they're not things that I really would have wanted to get in any other circumstance, but because they were there for three quid, I was like, oh, might as well. Um, Part of the Prime's Cloudburst. I've now got all these pretenders. How did that happen? Like, I had absolutely no intention of buying more than like three of them, let alone all of them. Um, but now I've got all of them. Again, there's like nothing to say about him. Like, it's not like one like Bludgeon or Octopunch where he's an actively interesting design. He's just a, a red bloke. Looks like he's in a kind of space suit. Uh, makes a, a double Gatling gun thing. There's, there's really nothing particularly distinguishing going on with him. I think maybe the best bit is um, like the, the kind of Minicon symbol power links port motif thing going on with the green paint on his cube mode. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, literally just because, oh, it's there. It's one I haven't got. It's less money than it should be. There we go. And from the same stall, with the same kind of justification in mind, um, three quid. Bumblebee Energon Igniter's Speed Series, is these ones called? Hot Rod. Why is this the rarest one? Why is this the one that you can't find in shops anymore? Like, I mean, again, I wouldn't have been bothered about getting it. I only got it because I saw it and it was three quid and I thought, well, I might as well get it because I've got all the others of this series. Um, but yeah, like, like, why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Why is he rare? Do kids really like Hot Rod? Do they? Do they? They seem to, because like I saw this in a shop once. I saw this in like Sainsbury's all of once. Never again. Never again. All the barricades and the Optimuses and different bumblebees in this little Legion-esque size, but not Hot Rod. Can someone explain that to me? But there we go, I've got him now. So I've now got all of these equivalent little guys and um, Again, there's really nothing to say about him because he's just a retour of Barricade for some reason. Um, and he hasn't even like got flames on him, he's just got orange bits. And it's like, okay. Again, the kind of retro styling is something I appreciate with these Bumblebee toys. Um, feels kind of more 70s than 80s somehow. Yeah, nothing to say apart from how there were sort of a few shenanigans with him in the bar with his uh, five mil back end connecting him onto other things and having him zoom along things with the engine that I got out of dropkick and all that kind of thing. So I suppose in the end it was it was definitely three quid's worth of a bit of a laugh. A final small and cheap thing, which makes me feel a bit bad. This was the only thing I got off of Toy Fu. And this was the very last thing I bought at the weekend. It's Neutro. I had to go and look him up. 
um, because I was just like, oh, this is a nice little bulldozer man. I think he's actually broken a little bit, like he's got a little pile on his bit snapped or something. That doesn't bother me. Um, I was like, yeah, he's fun. He's nice. He's just a little little chunky digger bloke um, with a shovel that reminds me of the Firefly from Thunderbirds. Remember that? Was it pod number five it came out of? And it's got a little hole in the front for the, the gun to poke through. I don't know, something about that just reminded me of that. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to have him um, because I wanted to follow Dorian's ethic of what's a good thing to get last thing on a Sunday, a Micromaster. And as Micromasters were the theme for the Toyfu zine and all that, I was like, yeah, let's have a Micromaster. Let's rummage through the box and see who's in here. Um, and he took my eye. But yeah, like... I only gave him three quid on one Micromaster and I feel kind of bad about that. I mean, it's like, yes, they raised so much money, um, but I could have helped them raise a bit more, couldn't I? But I felt like the thing was, I kept going back and looking at different things that they had there and it's like, oh, mm, I might come back for that. I was looking at like a, a G1 Darkwing, very, very nearly dropped 50 quid on that. But I knew that if I did, I'd, it's, oh, there's so much danger of me snapping the power master mechanism inside him because I've heard that's the thing that happens with them. I was like, oh, I don't really want to. So I put him down and then I came back round and he was gone. So yeah, it was a bit of a, a busy sort of uh, thoroughfare, that toy food table. Every time you walk around it, there was different stuff out and something you might have seen before that caught your eye was gone. And so it just led to me just buying a Micromaster of them and feeling a little bit guilty. Next up is Hunt for the Decepticons Oil Pan. Uh, basically, the movie scouts were good, weren't they? They're still some of the best figures ever. Um, Revenge of the Fallen Breakdown, which is what this is a repaint of, is one of my all-time faves. But I broke him. Um, and I've always kind of wanted a justification for getting his repaint. But he's orange and purple and he looks good and he's colourful and it's just... Oh, it's that, some of that energy from that 2010 line where it was just, we're just going to make new Transformers, we're just going to make new blokes and it doesn't matter if they're movie or classic or whatever, they're just new Transformers that haven't existed before and he's one of them and I love that and I miss that. So when I found him on Dave Tree's stall, which was, it was a bit of a moment of like, oh yeah! Dave's here, let's get into all that cool stuff and see all of this lovely movie stuff that felt like no one else had got in the entire room. Um, and it was like, oh, what do I go for, what do I go for? Um, and seeing him there for 10 quid was like, yes, definitely. Um, because for whatever weird reason, he's actually quite expensive if you try and get him online. Um, and yeah, it's, it's good, it's good, it's a scout, it's a scout, it's nice. Uh, I really like him, simply because he's a complete nobody. Don't be sleeping on the movie scouts now. They good. Oh yes, yes, yes. Here's something very special indeed. Um, it's actually the first thing I suppose I received while I was in the Hilton. Um, as I was going around meeting my mates and all that, um, our good friend, our good bigger, taller than me friend, Jacob, gave me this custom. This this is I think the uh, the last night crosshairs little Legion one, painted as Vash the Stampede from Trigun. And I was like, yes, yes, lad. Oh, this, this is so good. Like, conceptually, it really works because, you know, Crosshairs looks like he's got a big coat on. And, like, there's also a through line there, which is very me, because the Crosshairs body type got repainted into a hot shot. So, ding, there's a bit on the Ben checklist. Um, and then it's, it's painted up to look like the one character from an anime that I've seen that actually looks and acts like me. Um, so this is this is a bit special, and the paint is actually yeah like it's done really nicely. He's all glossy and shiny, and he's got the red coat bits, and he's got his sort of like roboty grey arm. I love it. It's so good. And then like the the little goggles on his head and like his sunglasses, and it's ah like, oh, yeah. This is special. It's a one of a kind thing. You ain't ever gone home one. I've got it. It's the best. I almost forgot to show you him because I came home and put him next to the Vash figurine that Dorian gave me last year on my on my anime shelf. So there we go. Moving on to a few bits from the Space Bridge. It's Energon time because it's downshift. Um, if you're a long time viewer you'll already know that yes I already have a downshift. Um, 
I got one, I, th I think I got one from Colin, the old, the old Matter Smasher. Um, but he didn't have his guns and he was a bit beaten up. Um, and for years, yes, he served me perfectly well. But when I saw a sealed one for the same price that I first saw one in 2004, five at a convention back in those days, I thought, well, damn, I'm, I'm going to buy that. I'm just going to buy another one. Um, so I've got a minty fresh one where he's got all his paint on his chest and he's got both of his weird sort of sidewaysy sort of guns. It doesn't hold properly. What can I say about energy on downshift beyond the fact that this is a bit of an odd fellow, but he's got some of the best light piping ever. Gorgeous. I don't want to make rebuying brand new sealed figures of things I've had loose and missing bits a new trend, but I did also do that again in this very hall, which you'll see in a minute. So I don't know, I don't want to be that guy, you know, that's like, oh, I have, I've got a loose version of this, but I want to go and get a minty fresh one. It feels uncomfortable, you know, it feels a bit like, who is, who is that person that does that? Um, but I've done it now, so I guess I'm in that territory. It feels a bit snobbish, I don't know. But I also got Command Ravage. Um, they had Doomlock there as well, and I was like, I'm coming back for you, and then I didn't. Whatever, it's something there to hopefully find again next year, because it feels like no one else buys Energon figures. Just me. Oh well, more for me then. The old Battle Ravage was the first Terracon one that I got. Um, I think I remember, vaguely remember buying that. That was, that's nice, that's, I, I like that. There's a bit of nostalgia there involved with that weird cat boy and buying him kind of again and new with a different, bit more shiny paint job, a bit more sort of Black panther -y kind of look going on. He's nice, he's cool, I like it. It just kind of reminded me that this is actually a really good figure. Like, like yeah, it's, it's, it is really nice. It's solid and kind of chunky and it's also posable and it's just, he's got the guns and everything and he's got the, the mace tail. It's really good for like what these basic figures were and, you know, kind of dealing myself a blow by remembering they were seven quid back in the day. Seven quid got you all this. Um, yeah, it's just nice. Underrated, I think, a bit. And if I quickly make him a cat, I've realised that, like, the best thing about this mould is that it transforms in a way which is like, is like, that's how, like, when you pick a cat up and their arms just stay straight out like that and, and they bend like that. It's realistic. Now to get the Space Bridge purchases, um, something I went back for on the Sunday because I felt like, you know what, it's become a bit of a tradition for me to go and pick up some reissue stuff because it is just really nice to just have some properly, like, pristine, fresh, very shiny on the chrome G1 stuff. Um, and the die cast is always nice too. Um, so I got Inferno. Um, it didn't say on his box whether he was sealed or whether he was just mint in box and he'd been put back in there. Um, I saw some tape on the outside and I could see all the accessories inside. Um, and I opened him up and found that he's missing a couple of bits. So, I don't know, maybe I was played, um, maybe I was suckered into that a little bit, uh, but I do rather like him. After, uh, I think Dorian got one either last year or the year before, and I was like, oh, actually, you know what, G1 Inferno is a bit nice. Just something really good about his design. Um, I kind of want one now. I've stickered him up. He wasn't stickered, so that was one of the things which led me to believe that he was new. Um, and I kind of feel like he looked better without the stickers. Um, it's a bit weird, a bit just all these different colours on the go and the weird sort of like RAF bits on his elbows. Like, what's that about? But um, yeah, long story short, I opened him up and then realised he's missing one of his chrome toes down here. And also, he's missing the kind of chrome hosey box bit that comes up over his the side of his head here as well where are they i don't know did someone buy this and take those bits off it to replenish their original figure i don't know probably looks like it um because the rest of this thing is untouched pristine not a mark on it absolutely no sign that it's been ever handled or even transformed all the joints are incredibly tight so what's the story here you know what what was going on with this with the first person that bought it i mildly regret you know not knowing more about this figure 
to spot that there were bits missing or to actually you know have looked at it properly because you could probably see that bit in the box to be honest um so when i opened it up it was a bit disappointing but this is my inferno now and i like him i've made him mine by stickering him up and uh yeah he's cool I realized i really like that diaclone thing where they have like missiles for hands it's just a shame that they don't shoot because like that whole idea of like a robot being able to shoot their fists at people i like that that's, that's, that's a retro touch that is like particularly dated, but in a good way. Like nothing does that these days, does it? That's such a retro super robot thing to be shooting your, your clenched fist at a bloke to punch them remotely. I kind of wish this was the Japanese one where you could flick that and he'd actually go boof from like 100 yards. But there we go. That's Inferno. He's, he's a handsome lad. <laughs> okay, right, let's get down to it. Remember when I said I spent a lot of money at Leicester Vintage? Uh, we're about to delve into the meats and potatoes of the haul through those purchases. Uh, what we'll start with, let's go with the smallest one. This is G2 Jetfire. Um, he was all sealed and new in his thing, as was everything I bought from them. Um, that's why I spent so much money with them, because it was a treasure trove of sealed stuff, and it was like, oh my days, this is, this is it. Um, I've got nothing against buying loose stuff. You know, it's it's perfectly fine to go buy loose stuff if it's in decent condition or it's in a condition that you, you're not bothered by. Um, but really, it, it's the best to buy MISB stuff. Just something really nice about thinking that, yes, I'm the person that's opening this after as many years as I have been alive. Um, or, like, one less, was it? Was it is these 94? But basically, it was like, I've never seen packaged G2 stuff. So to pick this up, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to have him. I haven't got any cyber jets. Um, this is cool. I'm going to have that. That's just, this is just a whole little experience wrapped up in that, that it's like, oh, that's new, you know. He's got good light piping, and he's all poseable, and he's got the missiles, and he's fun to transform. He's very kind of Cybertron Thundercracker, actually, the way he transforms. His alt mode feels like... Pretty much every random generic jet fighter toy that I had in the 90s. Um, something about that, isn't there? Like, you don't get toys that are just a camo jet plane with the, like, the US Air Force stars on these days, do you? It just doesn't happen. Strangely dated thing that I relate to because I just had loads of toy jet planes that were just jet planes. And this feels like one of them. But it's a Transformer. But the weird thing with him is that he's got, he's got Decepticon symbols on him. Like the box says, Autobot Jetfire. No, that's that's not an Autobot badge on him. And then I found out that this was just gonna be, is it Hooligan again? Like in a color scheme that isn't that like tiger stripe orange that you would normally have. And it was just gonna be a different deck over him and it was just gonna be Hooligan again. So that's why he's got that badge on there. But no, 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 actually, no, no, stop. No, let's change that. Let's uh, make it Jetfire. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. And while everyone else was buying the massive siege jet fires that there was a proper mountain of as tall as me on ID Toy Stall, yeah, I went and bought the weird obscure G2 one from the 90s that no one remembers and will probably never get an update. I forgot to see, like, like Mike had his. We, we were sat in the bar, like, balancing and attaching loads and loads of different figures to his big massive one and it's like it's a big proper big massive thing and it's really clever and really cool and the way the hands work and the way it transforms it's like amazing amazing thing but I've got no interest in it at all big properly G1 jet fire no doesn't do anything for me maybe a little bit more across yeah but then we all know why that doesn't happen don't we so while that was for many people the thing they came away with from TF Nation the thing they went there to get um, yeah, I was just like, no, I'm happy with the little tiny 90s one. Because that's how I be. Keeping it with obscure 90s tat. Um, oh no, sorry, it's not tat. Possibly the only kind of old-ish figure that I've been thinking about, like, actually wanting to get. Because it was like, I don't know, a few weeks before TF Nation, I was thinking, you know what? I, I, I want a dog transformer. Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about getting a Beast Wars canine and I roll up to Leicester Vintage's stall and what is there sat all nice and sealed in his box a Beast Wars canine so there we go yes you're coming home with me he's a German Shepherd as a kind of like riot gear police robot which is kind of a nice theme 
Um, he's got this weird, scary bat face. I much prefer when you do that and give him a kind of normal face that looks more like what you would imagine just a, a dog transformer to look like, just kind of stern, but not particularly scary. So while like every depiction of K-9 in fiction that you've ever seen, in comics or whatever, he looks like that. He's got this weird, I don't know, edgy, almost Batman face. Um, I, I like to do that and open it up and give him his proper face. You can probably see exactly how he transforms already. Um, he's got a dog tail. He's, he's got a floofy, waggly dog tail as, as a gun. Um, and when you transform it, you literally just have to stick it up the dog's bum. Uh, and also like the instructions actually tell you things like split the dog head in half. It's like, these are sentences I, I don't really want to be reading. He is the doggo transformer. Um, he's impaled through his spine with the missiles that go in his gun. And uh, you have to use his back as a shield. When you start to think about it too much, it all becomes a little bit frightening, um, to be honest, a little bit unsettling. Um, but he's got his little, got his little dog feet down here, augmented by his roboty boots. I like thinking like, how many people in the 90s bought K9 because they had a German Shepherd and wanted a transformer of their dog? I mean, yeah, it's not exactly extreme and gnarly and, you know, vaguely aggressive to buy a, a, a toy of a domesticated animal. Um, and of course, he's he's got a kind of angry, snarly face, like, oh, he's, he's a feisty police dog who's going to bite you. Oh, oh, uh, watch out. Oh, yeah, he's, he's not a nice doggo. Um, but like it's just nice to just to just have a transformer that's just just a dog. Even though of course German shepherds didn't exist millions of years ago when the Beast Wars was going on. Keeping with the beastly theme, and actually tapping into the theme of the convention as a whole, which was Beast Machines, which was a little bit underserved, you know, they didn't really do a lot, did they, for making it a kind of Beast Machines anniversary event. But I marked the occasion by buying my first Viacon and my first deluxe Beast Machines figure. It's Thrust. Oh yes. When I saw this there, all uh, done up and new in his box, it was a bit of a moment like, oh my god, they've got one of those. Because I don't, I don't know if he's rare, um, but there's just that feeling um, that he kind of is. For whatever reason, I feel like he is, and he was, and it's like, oh my god, I've never seen one of them before. Um, like, how many of these do you see? So I, I bought him. And honestly, he's probably like one of the favourite things I got. Like, he's such a weirdo. Such a weird thing. But he's such a cool toy. Like, oh, nothing like this. There's nothing like this. He's just a big, tall, gangly, Bicycle man, and it's like his, his feet are made of the wheels split in half, so they just yeah, they'll do that. But like, you know, he's got ankle tilts, um, and the knees work with like got like pistons in there, and his legs, he's got really good light piping, and his head goes all over the place. And on this joint, that all of this feels very, feels very bionicle, you know, it feels very like earliest 2000s latest 90s kind of tech guff in there. I suppose actually because he's, he's a motorbike with a face, he's more of a robo rider really isn't he? Yeah. Oh there's a there's a deep early 2000s Lego cut for you. This is a robo rider transformer, oh my god. His, his mouth opens, yeah. Thrust has a mouth apparently. Apparently that the kind of gas masky venti bit isn't his mouth. There's a mouth underneath that which makes that his nose. I don't know, I don't like it. It's it's not nice, It's uh, it's got teeth in there. It's, no, let's just close it up and forget that exists. And this claw does a grabby thing, which I like a lot. Like, it's a bit like honk, 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 honk. Um, but that's that's cool, that's fun. Um, and then of course this one, you can open up the fingers um, and it shoots a missile. It's just, it just feels like he does loads of weird and different and cool stuff. And he's got chrome and he's got light piping. He's got like at least two like official like wheeled robot modes. Like you can put his feet together. So he's got that one like unicycle leg foot thing like he had in the show. Or, or the instructions tell you to flip down these wheels on his shoulders and give him like a tricycle robot mode, uh, which is actually kind of fun. And one of the, well, actually it's the, the only kind of 
properly stable way to get him to stand up. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. How, how do you make something this strange? Basically, I love it to bits. Oh yeah, I, I forgot as well, when, when he's a bike, um, there's a little wheel underneath here, that when you roll him along, it makes the weird kind of bug face here look like left and right, or not left and right, it only goes one direction, but it, like it, it makes it look round like that as you push him along. So weird, I love it. For the longest time, I felt like just perfectly happy to have the three Beast Machines Maximals that I had back in 2000. Um, and yeah, I've literally just, I've never, ever, ever, ever been interested in getting back into Beast Machine stuff. And yes, I've kind of, I've kind of regretted never getting any of the Vehicons, and I, I kind of, I suppose I always kind of, kind of low-key wanted a Jet Storm or a Tank or maybe. But nah, man, Thrust is where it's at. This, this owns, he's so good. And it's kind of like the best bit is, they make absolutely no bones about hiding the fact that he's Waspinator. Like, you know that bit in the show, spoilers, sorry if you haven't seen Beast Machines, you know that bit in the show where it's this big reveal, this huge shock surprise twist that he has the spark of Waspinator inside him when he's this kind of brooding, cool guy, loner, rebel without a cause kind of thing. Um, and it turns out it's just Waspinator in there. The box, his bio on the box, straight up tells you he's got the spark of Waspinator in there. Gives you all this spiel about, oh, how he's all edgy. And she gives him this like nihilistic motto and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, mate. Rumoured to possess the spark of the protocol Waspinator. And it's like, you just spoiled the show. Like, when did this come out? <laughs> you, you've just spoiled a massive plot point of the show on the back of the toys box. Oh, it's great. Oh, the whole package. I'm so glad I bought this sealed. Like, yeah, it was 30 quid, but like, worth it. Every penny. Delving back into the Unicron trilogy, as I'm obviously want to do. Energy on Bone Crusher. I don't have any of these Decepticon combiner limbs from Energon. This is the first one I've ever had. Um, he's really, really good. Um, another one of the absolute faves of this haul. Um, he's just a digger man. He's a bone crusher that's beige. You know, like the movie one. This would have been the last bone crusher that came out before the movie one. Is there a link there? I mean, let's face it, Energon also had a barricade and a blackout. It was going on when they were making the film. I don't know, I've got to feel like there's a link there somewhere. I, I'm, I'm going to die on this hill. I feel like there must be. And some, even the vaguest sort of through line from Hasbro, there must be a link there. Um, but anyway, this is Constructicon Bone Crusher with his big blue gardening tool. Like, this isn't a weapon, it's it, it, it's a hoe. It, it's, it, it's an implement for him tending to his allotment. Sorry, it's the only thing I can see that as. And that just endears him to me even more. Because I can just imagine him like out there, you know, like putting his marrows in, getting his veg on, you know. Really nicely posable. The transformation is one I've encountered before in the Cybertron hardtop. Transforms exactly the same way. But he just makes a digger instead of a buggy. He's got light piping. Remember when Scouts? Remember when Scouts had light piping? Oh, it's so good. This is this is the good stuff. And his digger mode is just sublime. Like the best digger that I've had in years. So good. Now we get to the other thing I bought, which technically I've already had for years, uh, and then went and got a sealed version of because it had his minicon. It's Armada Pterosaur. Um, the only, see, yeah, it's the only Armada figure I got, isn't it? Yeah, huh. a lot less Armada around this year. A lot more Energon. That's okay with me. Um, I'm running out of Armada things to buy. Um, yeah, Pterosaur. I had him before, but he didn't have his uh, his wing blades. Um, a lot of his, like, oddly sort of holographic sort of bits were rubbed off. Um, that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, so ostensibly this is a toy that I've had for ages. It doesn't feel that new, but it is nice to have him in perfect condition. Because I'm, I'm that guy now, apparently. I will only buy sealed Armada things now. I'm, I'm there. He's just... I, I'm sorry, I've been watching The Dark Crystal. He's just this kind of Skeksis rat bag, isn't he? He's got to be the biggest scumbag out of all the Armada Decepticons because I have the uh, the Armada Dreamwave guidebooks. I know his bio. He stole his Minicon. Little Ironhide here, who is a she. She um, is basically a little Miss Stockholm Syndrome. 
Um, Pterosaur like killed her previous Autobot partner and then stole her for himself. That's dark. That's very dark for a kid's thing, in it, you know? Like, yow. And his motto is, the strong take and the weak give to me. Like, mate, I, this is this is the worst guy in Armada. Like, you know, Decepticons in that series are particularly militaristic and all that. And they actually, like, successfully conquer Cybertron for a good million years or something. Um, but none of them are as just gross and uh, just a complete, yeah, a complete scumbag as this bloke. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, wow, you know, if there's anything to say about this set of figures, it's, it's that it has the kind of yikes wildest characterization in all of Armada. But again, they're nice toys. Alrighty then, just before I move on to the biggest bits of the haul, um, I'm going to speak about the smallest bit. Um, that I totally forgot about in the video before. I got some of the effect parts for Siege Blokes from Mike. Uh, G Works Toys was what was on his banner on his stall next to Adam in the Forge. I've got to be honest, the only reason I've ever looked at any of the Battle Masters figures is because of the effect parts they come with. Um, so to be able to just have a little bag of like four bits without a target master I don't care about um, was quite nice actually. So, you know, they're all 3D printed bits that Mike made and uh, they're they're five mil and three mil, is it three mil? The lumps that they're covered with for the the explosion bits. Um, uh, yeah, just a little selection of bangs and booms and things um, to go on guns and blokes. I was a bit stupid because I was looking at some of them thinking, oh, this, this one hasn't got a hole in it, how am I going to attach it? Is, it? is it come out of the printer wrong? It's like, no, it goes on the other way and it simulates the stuff coming out of the gun rather than hitting the bloke and it's like, uh, no, uh, I was just being very stupid. Did I also pick up a, 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 yeah, I think it was only one, um, pack of the Transformers Trading Card Game cards, um, mainly because it's like I, I did actually go with the intention of playing some games. Um, I put a deck together and put it in some nice, like, teal sleeves. It's all very on brand for me and I then completely forgot to set foot in the little section that was reserved for going and playing the game. But, very thankfully, on the Sunday night, um, Mike did sit down and play a few games with me, or at least like one game that felt quite long, even though it was turbo mode. Um, but that was a lot of fun, and it felt like, yeah, finally, it's like, yes, I can get to feel how the game actually plays. I have played it like twice before with my mates, um, but it finally felt like, oh, it's clicked now, I'm, I'm understanding the advantages of certain things in gameplay and all this sort of stuff. Um, so that was good anyway. But all that aside, it's time to move on to the like pièce de résistance sort of stuff. It's both from R.I.D. Uh, 2001 um, because I've kind of realised that that's that's like it's a line that really means a lot to me, despite the fact that I basically missed most of it at the time and wasn't really bothered by it in 2001. Um, yeah, it just feels like it's a, it's a perfect amalgamation of like nostalgia and loads of stuff I've missed and loads of stuff I never knew about at the time and a mix of Beast Wars and Zalbada and it's, 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 a, it's a kind of weird sort of midpoint of my childhood Transformers lines. It's like the sort of apex of the curve between Beast Wars to the Unicorn trilogy. So it's something really good. I, I've just really gotten into it. So we've got Dreadwind and Smoke Jumper. Um, yes, I have got a version of this big lad before. I got uh, Robot Master's Gigant Bomb. I, I said, how you say it? I still don't know. Um, Gigant Bomb from TF Nation a couple of years ago. Um, and I suppose technically he looks a bit better. He's got a bit more paint on him and everything. Um, but you can't beat just this, just military drab green, the clear red bits, sort of proto lug nut fatty look that he's got going on. It's great. Um, these two are figures that I've kind of known about for a very long time and sort of had in the back of my mind because I got, back in the days of yore, before it was Fun Pub, it was 3H, um, the official Transformers Collectors Club magazine. I think it was the, actually the only one they ever did. And it came with some like fan mode instructions on how to combine these two with Armada Galvatron in a weird sort of way. Um, I'm going to do that. I will do that one day. Now I've got these. But yeah, it's like they've been sort of on my mind or somewhere in the back there for a long time. Um, so to see them in their box all sealed and new, it was like, oh, oh I'm coming over these, aren't I? Um, but yeah, like Smoke Jumper, 
Is he? He's cool. You know, they're cool lads. You know, they're G2 moulds, really. Um, but that's fine. Nothing wrong with them. You know, this guy's all nice and poseable, and the light piping is stonking, and I love the colour schemes. They're kind of odd move. They come with a sheet of stickers. Um, but I don't think I'm going to put them on because I feel like that's going to be a move I will regret, um, even though it would make them a little bit more colourful. But they're great, just as is. I, just, I love the badges they've got everywhere. Just proper big white board of Decepticon badges all over the place. It's like, that's, that's how things should look. Don't mind me, it's just, yeah, it's just one of the weird little things I focus on with figures from this era. Um, yeah, the only trouble is, like, this, this mould is really hard at standing up. Like he's just he's just too top heavy. His little his little legs are just no no they're not good enough. He needs some he needs some heels. And so those lovely boys aside, it's time to move on to the biggest thing, which did cost the same and is still our ID. Ah, oh, it's it, as soon as I saw it, I suddenly remembered. Oh yeah, that was the one thing I was intending to get that I'd completely forgotten I was actually going to look for. Um, it's our ID Megatron. Oh. <laughs> Look at this, look at this. Yeah, this is something else. I mean, oh, first thing that I feel like saying is it doesn't feel like a Transformer really, does it? Like, there's not really a lot here that is saying Transformer. It's just some big anime monster man that's like, I don't know, like Digimon or so many different like things from like the 20th century in the very, very beginning of the 21st that you just don't get these days in terms of style. Like he's just covered in all these sort of ornate like gold scroll work bits looking all imperious and regal and all this chrome and all the sort of red glowing orbs and just spikes and fins and scales and claws, bat wings and all this stuff. It's crazy and I love it. As I was, you know, sort of getting more into our idea over the past year or past year and a bit or I don't know how long it's been, this sort of ride I've been on where it's like, oh, our idea is the best thing now. Um, I've realised that, yes, this is something special. This is something I need to get my hands on because it's just, there's nothing else like this. Like, there's never been another Transformer that looks quite like this. Yes, it's got a few little sort of Beast wars touches with the sort of spark crystal in there. And yes, he's a Predacon. And this is actually the only Predacon Megatron I've got. Don't, like, stone me in front of everyone in the town because I haven't actually got a Beast Wars Megatron. But, um, yeah, it's it's just cool. His eyes are chrome and his bits on the side of his head are chrome and he's got teal and chrome on his chest and it's just... He's so shiny and he's got all the see-through bits and he's gonna hit you with his hot and spicy knickknacks. Um, I don't think I've actually remembered how to do all of his modes. I haven't learnt them all yet. I've been sat with the instructions here with him for the longest time. It's like, oh yeah, I, I can kind of get the dragon mode down and like the bat mode is really weird because like he's got a little, he's got a little bit you fold out from under his chin that is just like the muzzle of like a sort of bat face with like teeth on it that goes over his robot like nose and mouth. That's so weird. And then of course there's like the claw mode like the grabby fingers and you can make him into like a Batmobile looking thing and you can make him into a jet and like because this is the same mold as the the uh, car robots and devil gigatron um it's got a couple of like clips or something for a couple of other modes you can make him like an elephant and what what is this who made this what is going on I love it. It's just so out there um, and it's so like, I don't know, it's like brave. It's it's just, it's not Transformers at all, is it? But it is. It's all technically in there and I've just got memories of seeing pictures of this thing back in the day on the back of boxes and thinking, what is that? Um, so yeah, um, I've got the possibly coolest obscure Megatron that no one ever thinks of as being a Megatron up there with all the rest of them. Um, and I'm very happy to say that I do. So that was it for my TF Nation 2019 haul. What a, a, a great selection of stuff it really was and what a wonderful selection of things that I didn't buy that I saw there as well. And it's, oh, there's never enough space or time or money, but 
whatever. Um, you know, despite all the stuff I've just taken ages to show you, um, I am very much up for a, a more sort of a less is more approach next year. Let's see if that just doesn't happen again, yeah? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah! I'm running out of room for all these robots! Uh, that's what it's all about, innit? Same time next year, yeah? In a bit.